Thank you so much for joining us today. This is Totally Rad in Roman RX's virtual building on the best summer school for 2022. I am proud president of Enrollment RX, Lawrence Levy. Thank you very much for attending our orientation session here today. We're going to just be covering a few of the talking points and reasons why we'd like you to attend Bebop. As far as our agenda, so we're going to just go through a few acknowledgements for our clients and our team, talk about our approach to Enrollment Arcs' support for 2021 and moving forward, as well as Enrollment Arcs' philosophy. Why do we do what we do here? Why do we build the type of software that we build and, and how does it impact our clients and benefit our clients? And then we, of course, want to talk about the upcoming event for the month of June and all of the sessions that we're going to be putting on this month and why you should be attending those sessions and what you'll be learning from those sessions. And then we'll wrap up with a few other resources for our success and some other reminders that we want you to keep in mind throughout the event. Also, I should just mention throughout today's presentation, we do commit the sin of putting too many words on slides. That is my fault. I apologize. And so I don't want to be reading slides to people as they are reading slides. This session is recorded. You can, of course, always go back and review these slides with greater detail, but maybe just listen to what I have to say. I'll try and point out the important parts of the slides as we go through. And then you can always go back and get a copy of the slide deck. And please also keep in mind that with everything we do at VBOB, we are trying to cater to a pretty diverse audience of experienced customers as well as newer customers. So we try and walk that line between being helpful to our newer customers, not taking things for granted, but also not boring our clients that are very experienced that have seen some of this information before perhaps. So please give us a little bit of license on some of those components. Components. Lastly, I'll just say, you may hear it in my voice, I was lamenting a couple of weeks ago that I wish this was in person. I thought that we could have had this in person this year. And then of course, a week later, I got COVID. So if I start coughing, please forgive me. But it's a good thing that we're virtual because I think that if this would have been in person this week, I'm not even sure I would have been able to attend. So thank you again for making it a virtual event one more time. And we hope that next year we can all be in person again. I want to start with a few acknowledgements for those of you that are on this call. Thank you so very much for your partnership. We really couldn't do what we do without you. You are testament to our success. We are so very, very proud of our clients and the work that we do with our clients. And all of our success that we do generate comes from the tremendous good ideas and experience that we learn from our clients. So with all of these projects that we're doing, project after project after project, we are able to incorporate those lessons learned and those best practices into our next iterations of our products and the next implementation implementations that we provide and just the next best practice guidance that we're doing for all of our clients. So thank you. We've learned that from you. We continue to learn from you. And you really are the most innovative group of institutions on the Salesforce platform that are stretching and using Salesforce more than most other institutions really in this world. And I can tell you that with certainty, with confidence, day in and day out in Roman Rx, we speak to new schools that are trying to use Salesforce, that are struggling with the platform, that are struggling with CRM technology, and are not able to do the kinds of things that our clients are able to do with these technologies. And so you really are a testament to the amazing work and the pioneering work that we're all doing together in our space. Equally as important, of course, is the amazing Enrollment Rx team, the raddest team in baseball, as we say, and they are incredible. This small group of people are the people that keep the lights on and keep everything moving forward for us. And they, they do an amazing job of supporting our clients and innovating for our clients and taking, again, all of those incredible good ideas and best practices that we're learning for every implementation and bringing them back into meaningful product innovations and enhancements for our clients. And this team was able in 2021 to resolve 1,850 tickets, support tickets. So. I know that many of you on this call, probably all of you, are familiar with the fact that Enrollment RX works on a ticketing system to resolve any and all concerns and support issues for our clients. We track that very, very closely. In 2021, as you can see, we resolved 1,850. At the end of 2021, I guess as the clock struck midnight on December 31st, we still had 109 open pending tickets. That doesn't mean that they're not resolved by now. They perhaps are resolved. It just means that at that moment, they were still being worked on in various stages and statuses. What it most importantly means is that they're not being ignored 
And I think that everybody on this call can appreciate that and knows that how hard we work to support our clients. But please do know that we do not ignore the tickets. We support our clients obsessively. And I'm very proud of this 95% resolution uh, rate that we are able to provide for our clients. Now, the way that we do that on the back of this tiny group of folks on our team is by combining that with our products. So here are the products that I know many of you are familiar with. ERX Core, Reader RX, Events RX, Form Builder RX, Import RX, uh, and even Integration RX. And these are the products that most of our clients are using to really deliver that RAD solution on Salesforce to make Salesforce RAD. Now, uh, not all of our clients use all of these products. I think as some of you know, some of you maybe are saying, hey, we don't use those products. Uh, we don't have that one or that one. And that's fine. There's always reasons why and evaluations why. But what we definitely would challenge anybody on is if you're not using these solutions, then what are you doing as the alternative? Because in Roman RX, we're going to talk about our philosophy in just a minute. But of course, we are building these products to be the very best option in the market, right? We really believe so fundamentally that these products are what a school should be using to make Salesforce rad. And we would challenge anyone to say, if you're not using these products, then how are you going to do it? How are you going to do what ERX Core does? How are you going to do what Reader RX does or Events RX or Form Build RX or Import RX? If you don't have those products, are you going to custom build that? Are you going to cobble together other solutions that are maybe not even native on the platform that are going to require greater support in order to make work for you? How are you going to do that? And is that really better than this alternative? If you don't have these products, then how are you building applicant portals that can change based on who's looking at it? And what are the reasons why we build these products? What are the problems that we are trying to solve for at academic institutions? So often we'll speak to a new school or a new potential client, and we'll hear these kinds of problems from them. So this is one of those slides that says it's going to have a lot of words on. So just I'll break it down here. But let's start with this one. What is a very common problem we hear? A common problem we hear is that recruitment and admissions teams are using multiple systems. We see that all the time. You go to a school, they have their, their recruiting team, and the recruiting team is logging into one type of system to capture inquiries and prospects. Then their admissions team is logging into a different system to manage applications and make decisions. The applicants are logging into another applicant portal environment to fill out the application itself. There's no ability to report on longitudinally where did an inquiry come from that became an applicant that became an enrolled student because they don't have that in one system. They would have to cobble that kind of data together from multiple systems. That's what's broken in higher education. That is a very, very common problem in higher education. We see it everywhere. And so we try and say, why don't you consolidate all of that into one system? You should have one RAD CRM that can, make, that can do all recruitment and admissions activities inside of one system. So that's a common problem. And the solution is to do that on one platform. The next one down, our busy admissions staff receive too many calls from applicants about next steps. And applicants don't know what to do next. What am I still missing? Do I have to submit this document and that document? Now, in Roman RX, many of you know, how do we solve that? We solve that with those incredible applicant portals, with checklist widgets and, and applicant status widgets and counselor widgets and text box widgets and whatever kind of widget and communication we want to communicate so that the person knows this is what you need to do next and it's intuitive. But if you don't have that technology, then how are you doing that? And that's a major problem in the industry. And then the next one down is, is related to that. Our current admission software can't handle the complexity of ever-evolving requirements. The COVID pandemic hits and now all of a sudden your applicant portal needs to change and you need to collect more information. Or the board ap approves a brand new program that was never offered before that's only offered online that has new application requirements. How are we adding that to the CRM system or to the applicant software experience? And so that's a common problem that we need to be able to say, hey, give me a few minutes, I'll be right back. I can add that. Now, again, those that speak in Roman RX understand that, yes, that's give me a few minutes, I'll be right back. But if you don't have our technology, how are you doing that? Same thing, our operational teams require IT support for even small modifications. We speak to so many schools that can't make changes to their system. That, they, that once a year, they get a chance to make a change to their applicant portal experience. And if they don't submit their changes and have to wait another whole year even before they can make changes again, believe it or not, that really does exist in our industry. 
So we don't want that kind of problem. We want the ability where people can make changes, the operational teams can make changes. Give me a few minutes, I'll be right back to any of those changes. That's our solution to that common problem. And then our legacy CRM is disjointed, lacks training resources, and has been impacted by admin turnover. How often do we find when at Roman Rx we speak to schools that have either tried to custom build or custom implement or, or have stood up legacy systems that the people that stood them up have left the institution? And why did we create it that way? Why did we build it that way? There's no documentation even that explains it, that's a problem. We come in, how do we fix that? We come in with products, right? We're gonna talk more about that in just a minute, but we come in with products that have user manuals that say, this is how you should do it as a best practice, not custom build it and figure it all out yourself from scratch. And then lastly, we wanna maximize Salesforce for recruitment admissions and decisions. And that's related to the other one. We speak to a lot of schools that have been using Salesforce, but just aren't getting, that's not rad for them yet. And I know that many of you on the call can relate to that. I mean, many of you came to us because you had been using Salesforce for years and, and without the kind of success that you were looking for. And, and then when we were able to implement and adopt our products, we we're obviously able to make it much more effective for you. So those are the common problems that we hear. So our philosophy, the way that we come at that in 2022 is to talk about these four big ideas here, which is the idea that we have to be an enterprise CRM platform, that what we're delivering here while we're talking about RAD all day here and all month, recruitment admissions and decisions, and that's absolutely what we're doing for our clients. We also need to be mindful that this is a CRM that could scale beyond recruitment admissions and decisions. And what happens if we go into the rest of the student life cycle? So it's an enterprise CRM that is a platform that can support that entire constituency, not just recruitment admissions and decisions, but the entire constituency when you are ready or when you're ready to scale, that you really should adopt a platform CRM perspective. Now, in Roman Rx, we talk about being object agnostic. That means that our products have to be able to fit into whatever your CRM platform strategy is. And those of you that can recall time before Salesforce had EDA, the education data architecture. So before there was EDA, we were still doing our work. After there was EDA, we had to be able to implement EDA for those clients that wanted it and have our products still work alongside it. And that's an example of object agnostic. That was a major lift for in Roman RX to make sure that all of our products and moving forward, of course, all of our products are going to be equally effective, whether you use our objects, Salesforce's objects, your own custom objects. Our products have to live alongside whatever your architecture looks like. And that's because our products are built to be object agnostic. Not all products are built to be object agnostics, but from a philosophy at Enrollment RX, ours are. They work equally well with or without whatever objects you would like to use. And we can talk more about that. Beyond that, we are going to define this term composable software, but everything that we're delivering is what we call composable software, which is the idea that the operational folks are able to make it do the things that they want it to do. And our composable software, amongst many things, is designed to eliminate technical debt. Because if you didn't have our composable software, if you didn't have Enrollment Rx's solutions, then what would you have? And what kind of technical debt would that have built up? If you had to custom implement, custom cobble, custom put together all of those solutions in the alternative to Enrollment Rx's products, undoubtedly, unavoidably, that does build up technical debt. In Roman Rx, what we are designing and building and delivering to our clients is designed to eliminate that technical debt so that our products not only come with out-of-the-box solutions, but also all of the support and documentation and materials that one would need to be able to use it and even hand it off to somebody else and so on. And that's our philosophy in terms of eliminating technical debt. That's our philosophy at Enrollment Rx, but we certainly want to consider what the analysts and the experts have to say in our industry. So here is a quote from Terry Linthair. She's an analyst at Gartner who focuses on the higher ed technology sector. And in 2020, which is of course two years ago now, Terry Linthair, she said that learners, especially adult learners, but all learners are increasingly seeking self-service do-it-yourself options. Okay. So self-service options means that an applicant portal that when I log in, I know what to do next, right? I should be able to see my checklist requirements. I should be able to upload documents. I should be able to access information on demand without having to call my counselor to find out what I'm missing or what I still need to do next. That is what applicants expect. 
And certainly that is what Enrollment Works is focused on delivering from a student experience perspective, an applicant experience perspective, that's self-service experience perspective. And personalized engagement, know who I am with pre-populated data. If I filled out an inquiry form and then I go to the application and I start filling out other forms, if there's forms I've already provided for you, you can pre-populate if it makes sense. Know who I am, pretend like you know who I am, for goodness sake. We have all of this incredible CRM technology and yet we keep asking people for their first names and last names and emails and phone numbers. That's ridiculous, right? Show me what interests me. If I told you I'm interested in business versus nursing versus the online campus versus the in-person campus, communicate those kinds of interest to me. And speaking in Roman Rex, everybody knows that, that has those technologies that we can do things like that with homepage widgets and portal experiences. And then even speak to me in my native language, right? The portal, and, and there's going to be a session later in the month from Salt Lake Community College is putting on a presentation on how they built the Spanish applicant portal as part of their uh, applicant portal experience. And that's the kind of experience that applicants are looking for and expecting as we go forward. And so we wanna make sure that we can deliver that kind of experience from enrollment Rex software perspective. Now, if we're talking about a future-proof CRM strategy, which enrollment Rex talks about a lot with our clients and our philosophy, we definitely encourage clients to consider what technology they adopt today, we want to make sure that they're going to have it five years from now, 10 years from now, they're still going to be on the same kind of technology, right? The same platform. And, and the way we articulate that is to articulate the difference between a platform versus a point solution and the benefits of a platform versus a point solution. In our industry, there are many other solutions that are not built on Salesforce that are just software that are built for one purpose, as opposed to us, which we build our software on top of the Salesforce platform that then affords for people to use Salesforce in other areas of their institution beyond that, which we are delivering beyond even just the random environment. And we think that's better than having a point solution. Why do we think that's better than having a point solution? Well, first of all, Gartner thinks it's better. Gartner says that CI should consider solutions that might be leveraged from a platform capability. And Gartner says that virtual experiences must transition from short-term disjointed experiments into longer-term strategy, which for us means like the applicant portal should be able to become a student portal that maybe should be able to become an alumni portal versus a point solution that's only an applicant portal. But when you want a student portal, go buy another piece of software that's completely separate and different from your applicant portal technology. So we believe that by consolidating on one platform as much as possible, you can eliminate those data silos. You don't need an admissions CRM separate from a student success CRM, separate from an alumni CRM. We believe in having one CRM that can support that from a platform as perspective. That allows you to leverage existing skill sets. So those of you that are Salesforce admins in the admissions world certainly could still help other areas of your institution build forms and build pages that they might need to eliminate Excel spreadsheets. So you can still help them by extending your skill set to those areas. Or conversely, even when you do need to add new admins to your teams, the fact that we're all in the Salesforce universe, it's great to be able to go out into the world and find other Salesforce talent and bring them into your institution that maybe don't even speak higher ed, but speak Salesforce and they can still make an impact. They can still create flows and they can still create things like reports and dashboards and things like that. And then scale existing integration technology. If you do have one CRM platform, then you integrate it once. And then when you're ready to integrate it with other areas of the student life cycle, like let's say you integrate admissions with Banner. And then when you're ready to do student success with Banner, that integration technology, it already is there and you can just extend it versus going to procure and buy something else to integrate yet another piece of technology. So from a philosophy perspective, we talk about that future-proof idea of adopting a platform versus is a point solution that's very important to us at Enrollment Rx. And Bob Yankelo, who's another Gartner analyst who focuses on the higher ed technology sector, in 2021, you know, we would talk about clicks not code and clicks low code and the idea that low code development on a platform, low code application platforms are attractive because they they help address the need for increased productivity and output of application modernization. They help address the widening gap of the skill set between the demand for IT development skills and what people need the products to do on a daily basis. And they help 
address the need for continuous and agile development. So clicks, not code. Clicks, low code was a very common buzz term, is a very common buzz term in our industry, right? It's the idea that with mouse clicks, you can do the things that in the past required a lot of software development and code to be written. In 2022, Gartner starts talking about what they call composable business and composable software. And composable software, they define as the idea where leaders can quickly build new business capabilities by assembling digital assets that in the past could not have been changed easily, but now they can be adjusted for better business value. So, hey, we created a new program at our institution. We've never offered it before. Can you add it to the applicant portal? Yes. Give me a few minutes. I'll be right back. Versus, oh, that's a six-month project. Let's call in the IT team and the vendor to add that to the CRM system. And so composable business means that we can seize digital opportunities faster and cheaper. That is the idea of what we are calling composable software. At Enrollment RX, we define that as the type of software that empowers operational staff to take control without relying on a team of software developers, as I've said a number of times. And the people on the operational level know their requirements best. The people on the operational level know their requirements best. So why do we make them play a game of broken telephone when they have to go articulate those requirements to a team of software developers who have to hard code everything and come back with those changes that probably the requirements in that period of time have even changed again? So practically speaking, what clients need and what our industry needs is composable software that the operational people can say, hey, let me try this. Let me change that. Let me change this back again. And for us, that means adding fields, adding pages, adding home pages, adding new programs, adding new checklist requirements, all of the kinds of things that go into making Salesforce rap. So the benefits of composable software, of course, are that we do empower those operational folks. We improve the constituent experience. We are able to take advantage of the admin user skills from a platform perspective that we can also do other things like what else would you like the CRM to do once you've got it working for you in one area, what else would you like it to do? And of course, rapid speed from vision to deployment. When you want to make changes to something, when you want to come up with a new good idea, these are the kinds of things that you can experiment with and make changes if you have the composable capabilities to do so. Now, it's not just those benefits. It's also if you have composable software, then that should come along with it things like documentation and support. According to Terry Lynn here, Terry Lynn Thayer, uh, the scope of a CRM project can rival that of an ERP implementation. I don't disagree in the sense that a CRM and an ERP are both enterprise software. Your student information system and your CRM system are both major enterprise systems at your institution. And your CRM system deserves as much love and as much nurturing and as much attention as your student information system investment did. But that means that your CRM is going to require equally as much user guides, knowledge base, user materials, ongoing training, ongoing webinars, ongoing upgrades. When there's going to be admin turnover, what's the strategy to support that? If you were to have that, can you just hand the keys over to somebody else? Or is that a major kludge of a project that's not going to go very well? And are there other people that are using these technologies and are doing it the same as you that you can go to and say, how are you doing it? Like here we have in our community where you, we definitely encourage our clients to speak to each other and talk to each other and share best practices. So this is part of the advantage of having composable software. If you don't have composable software, if you choose rather to custom implement, custom build, custom deliver. So then a lot of these pieces would be missing in our experience from what we see in the industry. People don't have those user guides. They don't know why they configured it that way and built it that way. And that's not something then that they can hand over to somebody else who might step into the, a new role. So this is the last philosophy slide, uh, which is how we see the rad world. Now, not all of our clients do it this way. Many may be on, are on this call even that are not doing it this way. But many of our clients do do it this way. And we just have this conversation from a philosophy perspective. We believe that all RAD activities, recruitment, admissions, and decisions activities should all occur in your CRM system. As we said earlier, we don't believe it's correct that the recruitment team might be collecting things in the CRM system, but the admissions team is logging into the student information system to manage applications and make decisions. We think that should all occur in the CRM system. We think only admitted student data should be sent into your SIS. 
Why should you have incomplete applications in your student information system? That belongs in your CRM system and only the appropriate data should be sent over to your SAS. On the left-hand side are the common data sources that need to feed a CRM system in recruitment and admissions. So things like test score lists, right? ACT, SAT, GMAC, third-party applications, the common application, the CAS applications, other centralized state applications that might need to feed into the CRM system as well, or other search lists and inquiry lists that are feeding into the CRM. So we have to account for all of those as well, have those feed into the CRM system, be able to make changes to those lists as well, and easily make changes and have that feed into the CRM system. And then again, all recruitment, admissions, and decisions activities should, should occur here before admitted student data is sent over to the SAS. That is our philosophy. That's what we think is best practice. I'll repeat, not, not, not even all of our clients are doing it that way. We respect the fact that there's always challenges and reasons why it might not be done that way, but that is what we would say is the end goal. That's where we would want to get to ultimately. Okay, so with that, uh, why are we here to attend VBOB? Well, hopefully you've already picked up on the fact that there's going to be some fantastic training and learning opportunities for admins and users. We've tried to put together a good blend of introductory courses as well as more sophisticated advanced courses and admins and general users as well. We are going to be talking about our new product announcements. Hopefully you're also gonna be able to collaborate with your peers online and throughout. And of course, we look forward to getting back together in person one of these days. And of course, throughout, we're gonna have fun and there are gonna be some prizes that we'll talk about in just a second. Okay, so uh, just a quick preview of the upcoming sessions. I'm sure many of you have had a chance to look at these already. But for those of you that haven't, I just wanna make a few comments about some of them. So the first one that's coming up tomorrow which will be led by Mark Satin, our chief operating officer, my business partner. He will be talking about the product release roadmap and what we have released and what we have upcoming. It really is a don't miss session. Please be there. It's going to be really interesting, exciting. We're going to be hinting at some uh, new product releases as well that are coming out. And so that is tomorrow at 11 o'clock. This says part one, but that is just poetic license there. We are never finished, of course, at Enrollment Rx, so it's part infinite, but there will not be a part two during 2022's VBOB. There's only one session on the totally rad product release. The next session after that is June 9th, which is using Form Builder RX with Reader RX. This is a very exciting session. Those of you that have been with us for a long time are aware of the fact that in Roman RX, historically, we had three user interface builders. If you built applicant portals, you built them using Form Builder RX. If you built reader experiences, you were building them with a separate product called ReadRx. And by the way, if you were building events experiences, you were building those with a separate product called EventsRx. So in an effort to eliminate technical debt, to consolidate that, to make the experience better, we have consolidated everything. And you'll see more from this with Mark. I'm not stealing anyone's thunder, but we've been able to deliver now the experience where you can use Form Builder RX to build Reader RX pages. And uh, that's what this session is about. For those of you that are using Reader RX and are using Form Builder RX and want to know how to do it better, please do come to this session. It's going to be a great insight into the direction that we're going. June 14th, same thing, Form Builder RX with Events RX. Events RX historically had its own UI builder to build registration pages. We now encourage you probably to use Form Builder RX. We don't have to. You can continue to use Events RX. I'm not going to steal anyone's thunder. The, the session will explain all of that to you. But excitingly, you can use Form Builder RX with Events RX as well. And so this now gives you all of the power of Form Builder RX with the ability to build those event registration pages. This session, if there was a part two to the product roadmap session, it would be this one. This is called codenamed using Form Builder RX with Salesforce Lightning Communities. But there's going to be a new product announcement in this session. And I encourage you, especially the Form Builder uh, major geeks that are really interested in what's coming next from Form Builder RX, you should please attend this session. As I said, there'll be a new product announcement there as well. Uh, and there's some very, very exciting things that we can see coming down the pipe from Form Builder RX with Salesforce Lightning Communities. So that will be June 16th at 11 o'clock central. 
June 21st, 11 o'clock, ready, set, go, flow. So I'm sure many of you have heard the fact that Salesforce is getting rid of process builder and workflow rules and replacing them with flow. So our team is going to be talking through some of just the best practices and approach and things you should think about, food for thought of how to get ready to say goodbye to process builder and workflow and, and replace that all with flow. Totally rad reader RX, June 23rd, 11 o'clock central. So this is not to be confused with the previous one, which was form build RX for reader RX. This is everything else reader RX. So aside from building the user interface, what else do you use read RX to do? And what is the purpose of read RX? And this will be all about some of the new functionality that we've added to read RX. So for those of you that are using ReadRx and want to learn more about ReadRx, please, of course, attend the session. June 27th, 11 o'clock Central, be the baddest rat of Salesforce admin. This is just more of standard Salesforce admin training as well as enrollment Rx admin training, uh, learning some of the basics under the hood, uh, admin type features that certainly a good Salesforce and enrollment Rx admin should be able to do very competently. So please do attend the session if you'd like to learn more about that. Integrating common data imports. So this was, if you recall, the pond slide with those three pond slides, those ponds on the left that we said were those data sources. How are we tackling those data sources? What happens when you get a new data source? What are you supposed to think about with those data sources? What happens when those data sources changes? What happens when the common app adds new field to the common app? And now are you collect those fields and where are they mapping to in Salesforce and how are you deduping and transforming and all of those kinds of things that would go into an, a data import and integration strategy. So please do attend the session if you'd like to learn more about integration RX and import RX and how we are blending those two things together for our clients. Uh, also, as mentioned, on June 22nd at 1230, Salt Lake Community College is very graciously inviting us a session on how they aim to become a Hispanic serving institution and deliver their Spanish applicant portal experience on top of Salesforce and Experience Cloud using Formal Direct. So please attend that if you'd like to learn more about that. And our great friends at Ohio University HCOM are going to be presenting on how they were able to develop a faculty data tracking system using Formula RX, where they are delivering a faculty portal experience. And that is incredible. They are an incredibly innovative client that have done amazing things. This is not the first innovative, incredible thing that they've done using Formula RX and Experience Cloud. They really are pushing the envelope. And I encourage you to attend the session. I encourage you to pick their brain as well and now and in the future because they are really a very innovative client. Lastly, jumping back to June 8th, as well as to be repeated again on June 22nd, we are providing a very standard, uh, we're calling it bring a friend how to make Salesforce rad. So if you think there is somebody who should sit through a sales pitch of Enrollment Rx and Salesforce, this would be the session for them. Uh, if there's anyone at your institution that you think would benefit from either hearing, you know, being resold on why did you buy this? Maybe they're new to the institution. Or if there's somebody at your institution in some area, maybe that could benefit from these products that you think should come and listen. This is a sales pitch. There's two of them. So if you can't make the one, the other one will be pretty much identical. And that's what that is for. So if you don't feel like being sold, if you've heard it all before, please skip this session. Okay, so just to wrap up a few last slides. So we wanna make mention just in terms of resources for your success. For those that are not familiar, we provide the RAD Navigator at help.enrollmentrx.com. This is our video library, user manuals, product release notes, frequently asked questions. It's an entire website that we, we devote uh, resources to that we have a team of people that are focused on. It really is another whole product uh, essentially for Enrollment Rx that we maintain and support that provides all of those materials to our client. Those of you that have been with us long enough that remember back in the day when we were doing Google Docs as our user guides, I think you can appreciate we've come a very long way. The RAD Nav Navigator continues to evolve. And I think you, hopefully, those of you that use it regularly can see even weekly upgrades and up enhancements to it that we're doing all the time. And we appreciate your feedback on it because you help us to make it better. But if you are not using the RAD Navigator, please make sure that you have access to that Misty Malenbach 
our director of client engagement will certainly be happy to help you get access to the Red Navigator if you don't have it. And that is where we are posting all of our materials and all of our, our support, including all of the recordings from these Red uh, VBOB sessions will be in the Red Navigator. With that, I will say thank you. I know that we spoke a little bit faster than normal. Thank you very, very much for attending. All the sessions will be recorded. If you can't make it, you can watch them in the Rad Navigator. And we look forward to a fantastic event. And thank you. Thank you for everything you do for us. We couldn't do it without you. So thanks so much. Take care.